So I'm going to, everybody turn to 1 Corinthians, chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. society. What about love? How much does God love us? A lot, a little bit. He gave his son. For all of humanity. I don't think we really understand the magnitude of that by the way we treat one another. Um, we don't really see love as a a prime factor of the world turning. Um, some of us don't even know what love is. We don't. We just don't. And we show that every single day. Um, we get bent out of shape, poke our mouth out, uh, say nasty things. Uh, when someone is trying to help us, we simply think it's a joke. But love is, is love. I, you know, we just have to understand that we need a whole lot more of it. And you and I, especially, have to understand that it holds the church together. Love holds the church together. <coughs> and it's important that We'll get a grip with that. Because if we don't, we're not going to survive. Amen. Um, love hides a multitude of sins. Mm -hmm. And if we're going to be forgiving, we're going to be loving, we have to understand that mm -hmm. it is what it is. Amen. Like there's absolutely... There's absolutely nothing you can do to me, and I say this all the time in prayer, that it's going to make me fall out with you. And even if you say you don't want to have a relationship with me, that's fine. But there's nothing you can say. I, human beings don't bother me. Like, words don't bother me. Like, if you swear at me and you tell me off, you lie on me and stuff like that. I don't worry about stuff like that. It takes too much energy to worry about. Yeah. You know, like, you don't, you really don't live where I live. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, you don't come in my address with that. Yeah. And if I don't want to be bothered with you, I got caller ID, both on my cell phone and on the house. So I really don't have to worry about things like that. And when church members start tripping, I really don't pay up on my either. I really don't. Because I know that it's just the devil. That's it's not you. Mean. It's the devil. Yeah. And he's able to influence you when you have bad days That's and things right. like that and you're having a horrible, horrible morning or a horrible, mm -hmm. horrible afternoon. I understand that, you know, it's it's difficult for you to bounce back and for me to bounce <coughs> back. But I always look at it like this. Okay, get that mindset out, read a scripture, listen to a song, and get your act right. Get back into the game. Because the more you go through your day, uh, allowing these things to fester, the more Satan is going to bring stuff your way to make you snap and react. Yeah. And we have a difficult time trying to control ourselves as it is. So if we're on a bad, under a bad spirit, imagine what happened, uh, happens. Uh, somebody turn to Romans 8 and read 31 through 39. Romans 8, 31 through 39. You ever see those movies where, where, where a couple, when they get ready to break up, they say, I just don't love you no more? And that's the reason uh, for the breakup, that they just don't love one another anymore. 
Um, isn't that a shame? Mm -hmm. Just don't love you anymore. <laughs> That's the reason we're breaking up because I don't love you anymore. anymore. Which is probably not the reason we're breaking up. No, you know, there's other reasons. There's but but love is why yeah, so we're breaking up. I just don't love you anymore. Yeah, yeah. okay. All right. <laughs> we have a distorted view of what love is, but we say that all the time. And we say it so casually, I just don't love you anymore. Okay? Just just you know, we don't we're not gonna get to the core of the issue. I just don't love you anymore. It's easy to say that and walk away. Well, will somebody read Romans eight? 31 through 39. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Okay, stop right there. What does that mean? The opening statement to verse 31. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Amen. Like if God is for me, I don't need to worry about who's against me because God is greater than my foes. David proved that. <clears throat> so like you can camp around me, but it's not going to do you any good because you can't do anything to me without God giving his permission. And when he does, he's going to limit what you do to me. So if he's for me, it's more than the whole world against me because God is more than the world. <coughs> So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not worried about that. I'm not worried about that. When things start happening and people start doing things, the first thing you need is recite this to yourself. Yes. Just recite this to yourself. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Okay, go ahead, brother. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all the things? Check it out. I'm not giving else to nobody in this room. I'm not giving else to gain for nobody in this room. Okay? And that's why I love and respect God so much because I'm not giving my son for an enemy. I'm not giving my son for people who talk about me. I'm not giving my son for people who laugh at me and lie about me and talk about me behind my back. God gave Jesus for all of that. How can we not love him? He didn't spare his son. I will spare mine. Amen. Because see, what I would do if I was God, I'd just zap everybody and start all over again. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm not going through that. Yeah. You think I'm going to be separated from my son? Think about what I'm, at, I'm saying to you. You think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be separated from all that I am for you? And I created you and I'm the creator? Amen. Oh, no. But in saying that, that's how I know that's the love I need to imitate. Yes. Because God separated himself from his son, gave his son, and his son agreed to it. Yes. Sure, Dad. Sure, Dad. I think Ellis will have something to say about this, too. If I told him, son, I'm getting ready to sacrifice you for this one or that one. I'm going to sacrifice you for devil worship. I'm going to sacrifice you for Hitler. I'm going to sacrifice you for racism. I'm going to I'm gonna just start picking all these things. Do you think he, he's going to say, oh, sure, Dad. <laughs> sure, Dad, go ahead. What do you want me to lay down? <laughs> Jesus said, sure, Dad. Let's do this. See, that's what I'm saying. I don't love you anymore, so I'm breaking up with you. I don't love you anymore. This marriage is over. Yeah. I don't love you anymore because I don't want to. Did God say that? Mm -hmm. so that's what I'm saying. We have a distorted view on what love is. You and I don't have a clue of what love is. We really Amen. don't. We really don't. We toss the word love around like it's Kool-Aid. We really do. We don't know ourselves as adults, and we definitely don't teach our kids that because our kids feel the same way. They feel the same way. I hear some of these kids when they when they finally start talking on the cell phone. When they really get mad and don't want to talk with their thumbs no more, they really pick the phone up. And some of the stuff I hear them say, I know they're mad then at that person on the other end of the phone, and boy, it comes out. All kinds of stuff come out. Did Jesus do that on the cross? No. Mm -hmm. No. No. Now you see what Christianity is all about. When they write Bible against you, what should you say as a Christian? Mm. I just couldn't help it, Ellis. 
They got under my skin. I know how you feel. I'm just that. And this doesn't happen often with me. But sometimes I get that close. That close. And God said, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. There's too much damage control that's going to happen after that. Uh-uh, 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 Ellis. Nope. No, yeah, yeah. that bridge will get burnt so much that it'll take two states to put it back. Yeah. <laughs> Stop yeah. it right there, turn around, walk away. It's not worth it. Mm -hmm. And then when I do that, I can see it. Okay, brother. Mm -hmm. Who shall bring a charge against God left? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It's Christ who died. And furthermore, it's also, he is also risen. It's also risen. Mm -hmm. Who is even at the right hand of God, who, make, who also make intercessions for us. Check it out. When people talk about you, who they're going to talk about you to? They can't go to God. Mm -hmm. Because if you're baptized into Christ and you belong to God, God doesn't listen to people coming to him with you. No, amen. See, God is like, not like us who listens to gossip. We listen to gossip. God is not like that. So if someone comes to the throne about us, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. The devil can't do that. He tried it one time, but it didn't work. So God is not going to allow anybody to talk about us. Why do we allow people to talk about one another? That's not love. No That's not love. I tell you, the antidote to that stuff, and see, when we're going to start getting over here to the Corinthians, because the Corinthian church had issues with that, I'm telling you right now, and, 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 and brothers and sisters, please believe me, I'm telling you, because of the wisdom I have, I can point people out in the church who the devil is into starting division, because they start talking about the church. <laughs> And I'm talking about you and I. We forget that when people are talking about us, you're talking about the church. And when you talk yeah. about the church, you're talking about the body. And when you talk about the body, you're talking about the head. So when we sit down in our living rooms and at dinner table and start talking about one another, we're talking about Christ. Yeah. The first thing you should say, uh, 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 uh. Mm -hmm. You have an issue, you have a complaint, you want to say something about Brother Stanley, Call his number. Here it is. I'll give it to you. We cannot sit up and talk about Brother Stanley in my home. Because when you talk about Brother Stanley, I let you talk about Brother Stanley, guess what's happening? We're talking about the church. You see what I'm saying? God doesn't allow anybody to talk about his elect. You can't go to God talking about his elect. Why do we allow it? That's not love. That's not love. Christians don't talk about one another and devour one another and slander one another. We don't. That's not love. Those are characteristics of the world. God doesn't allow it. Why do we allow it? Mm -hmm. It doesn't. Okay, brother. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall, tribu shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or perils or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Psalms 44, 22. Nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. Not one solitary thing on this world, <laughs> in this world, because God, Jesus died for everyone, for all. He died for everyone, not just for the righteous. He died for all. And there's nothing, nothing that can separate us from the love of God. Absolutely nothing. So if that's the case, the church must, must, we must understand. The Corinthians didn't understand that. They were devouring one another. That's why the letter was written. Christians were acting crazy. And they were talking about one another and devouring one another. That's not the love of Christ. That's not the love of God. Jesus did everything he possibly could to keep those 12 disciples knitted together in the flesh while he was in his earthly ministry. Even Judas... And all that he was doing, stealing the money, selling them out and everything, he did everything he could to keep the harmony within that group. The church is worth fighting for. It really is. It's worth fighting for. And whenever we get that mindset where we want to say things about one another, understand this, the devil's in you. God ain't in you. The devil's in you. God ain't in you because God ain't going to talk about you. He died for you. 
He died for you. So just think about it. Think about it. Don't want to hear it. Go to go to the person and you deal with those issues and you handle it. For your sake, we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Okay, bro. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, I think that list is pretty complete. There are times when I read this passage where I cry. Tears will roll down my face because there's nothing. He said there is absolutely nothing going to separate me from the Father. Absolutely nothing. Isn't that amazing? I, see, that's why I can't leave him. I, I just can't leave him. I can't leave him because... There's nothing, there's absolutely nothing in this world to come, anything created, that, that he's going to separate his relationship and my relationship with him over. He's not going to do it, he's just not going to do it. I, I got to have, I got to put on Christ, I got to put on that makeup, I got to act that way. I, I have to act that way. Because I'm not, see we always talking about the Baptist people about saying, and always say. Church of Christ talk about the Baptist church like crazy about one save, always say. <laughs> and we never talk about this when we sit up with one another and don't love one another. Yeah. See, we don't talk about that. There are sacrifices to be made for every individual here at the Bridgeport Church of Christ that nothing will separate us from one another. Absolutely, positively nothing will separate us from one another. That's the mindset we have to have. If we're not, we're not loving like God loves. And we're not pleasing. Now let's go back over to uh, Corinth, uh, Corinth here and see what, what we were struggling with over here. Because we had some serious issues over here. We had some issues going on over here that affected this church immediately. And I think about, I think about this city uh, and the things around us. What does spiritual freedom mean to a new Christian? When everyone around us is caught up in immorality and you're bombarded with constant temptation, how do you stand for righteousness? You know, you know what that, that feels like. You know, you the only one doing something right and everybody's <coughs> doing something wrong and they're trying to get you to do wrong and you're struggling. You're struggling because you're your friends. And I, I, I guess that's why I don't have many. <laughs> because the dumbest thing in the world to me is someone making me do something I don't want to do yeah. through peer pressure. Like you keep needling me yeah. about something. Because what happens, what happens with me, I don't know about you. When I tell you I'm not going to do something, and you keep trying to get me to do something, and I'm talking about bad things. I'm not talking about no silly thing. I'm talking about stuff that's going to hurt me or hurt someone else because you're doing it. I look at you, and then I have to say something when you keep it up. I have to say something. I say, stop it, stop, stop it. You know why? If you want to, if you want to, if you want to do drugs, go ahead and do drugs. It's not going to stop me from loving you, but I'm not going to do drugs with you. No, amen. If you want to drink to get drunk, you go ahead. If that's what you want to do, I'm not going to do that with you. I love you. I mean, you're my friend, but I'm not doing those things. That's right. You know, I look at some of these shows, you know, I watch CNN sometimes where, you know, these kids are being bullied in school yeah. on the internet and stuff, and they, they're bothering kids, and my mom always told me that when you're with a group of guys, or if it's a group of y'all, male or female, female somewhere, and you're somewhere doing something, you're sitting at a restaurant, you're walking somewhere, you're in the mall or something, and somebody, one person, says something or does something crazy, you're associated with that group. Like when someone has to identify what happened, let's say that person, your friend, started doing something real, real crazy, and somebody got hurt. Yeah. I tell Erica this all the time. I say, stop, because every time you and I be playing and you acting up, I get hurt. See? Now, when someone has to describe the incident, they will say what? 
that person there with the red shirt or the red sweater or that person with the headband or the braids. Didn't the girl say that to Peter? I seen you I with, them. with them. Yeah. Now, Christ yeah. is over in the courtyard getting ready to get jacked up. Yeah. All of them have dispersed yeah. around there, yeah. and people are now identifying them. And that girl said, there's one of them. Yes, yeah, He walked with him. You see what I'm saying? So you guilty by association. You, could, you probably didn't do anything wrong. It was that person, your friend, that, and we see this all the time in society. Yeah. That one person did something crazy, now all of y'all down to the police station. Amen. That's true. Everybody is now identifying different people, clothing, article of clothing, hairstyles, and all that, all because what? You were with that person. Only one person did something wrong, and you're yeah. with that person. Amen. And now you're just as guilty, and now you got to prove you're innocent because you didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. All because you can't tell that person, you got to cut it out, leave the group. See, there's nothing wrong with the four of y'all or five of y'all telling one friend he got to get lost. Especially if you the driver. I'm telling you, if you drove that person there, you're in control. You can tell that person yeah. you ain't driving them home. Mm -hmm. Say, look, we're not going to act like this in this restaurant. I've said that. I've, stop it. You know, this waiter, is he's breaking his neck or she's breaking her Stop asking for everything. You know, when people start being an irritant, you have to raise your hand and say something. Because you're guilty by association. Yes, you are. So just think about it. Think about it. When people try to make you do things that you don't want to do, you say this is not right. That's all you have to say. And if they insist on doing things, you don't need them in your friend book. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. Because if your friends only want you to do bad things when you're around them, take them out of your book. And let them know you took them out of your book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't don't let it become hearsay. Tell them to their face. Every time we get together, we get in trouble. We we get in trouble because you do get in trouble with them. Mm -hmm. Every time I turn around, you're talking about this kid. One of these days, this kid's going to go off. And when he go off, he's going to go off on all of us. Mm -hmm. You see yeah. what I'm saying? You yeah. see how the devil do things? Yeah. He's not with one. With one. With one, and then when that person snap, he gonna snap with everybody who was laughing at him. Mm -hmm. Everybody in the postal incidents, everybody, not only the supervisor, everybody that bothered that person. You see? Because when you lose love and fall out of love, you snap. There's nothing else but evil. There's nothing else but darkness in your mind. And the only thing you want to do is satisfy self. See? Christ didn't do that. But I'm telling you the real deal. These things happen every single day out here. Every single day, these things happen. Kids and grown-ups the same way. Grown-ups and adults are the same way. Don't just, let's not talk about the teens. Adults are the same way. You let other people influence you. Yeah. Influence you. Oh, don't go to church today. Okay. Don't go to fellowship. Okay. Yeah. See? You do. Yeah. Think about it. Yeah. It's that easy. First Corinthians chapter 13. Though I speak with tongues of men of angels, but not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. Mildred, on your sheet, I give you the Greek breakdown of that, of these two uh, sounding brass and on the third sheet. That's the Greek breakdown of that whole word that Jason mentioned on Sunday morning. That last sheet. Right. Right there. Oh, yeah. Okay? Yes. Yeah. And if you have a strong concordance that to the right yeah. hand word, which is in Greek, oh, you pull that up in the um, Greek dictionary, it'll take you right to the pages in the uh, uh, New King James or the King James Bible that will show you those words. Oh, All right, so I thought maybe I'd do that for you, help you out with that. Good. All right. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains but have not love, I'm nothing. I mean, this is deep. This is deep. This is deep. That's why we, that's why we can't keep, the, keep it together in relationships because once love leaves the picture, we're done. Because we, we, we're going to get down to this. We just simply don't understand. Mm -hmm. We don't understand. We don't understand how important love is. And we don't understand what's going on with people. Amen. We just don't understand. You don't understand that internally I'm going through some things. I'm trying to stay alive here emotionally. 
And I know the outwardness of me is showing you something differently, but I inwardly, I'm trying to keep it together. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to keep it together. And I know my behavior has changed. I know that, you know, my perspective has changed, but I, 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 I'm trying to keep it together. I need you at this particular time in my life to understand me. Yes, my See, that's when love has to step up. Step up. That's when love has to step up in, re in relationships because you know I'm not really like this, but I'm, I'm really dealing with something. Yeah. Honestly, you know, I go to the doctor and the doctor tells me something. Remember, you're either not there or you're on the other side of the door. And the doctor has told me something about my body that I got to now deal with. That's going to affect my relationship with me and you. Amen. Any of us that got to take an extra pill, that affects us emotionally. Sister uh, uh, Charles is going through that now. Yeah. Physically affects your emotional behavior. Because when you're not right, when you're not balanced, you're off. You're just you're off center. And people need to understand that sometimes that's a process. I think I'm going or went through a middle age crisis. I know that will be defined differently by the one that I love, but I feel that I am not the person I used to be. In more ways than one. Yeah. And that affects me. Yeah. <laughs> I am 56 years old and I am not going backwards, I'm going forward. Oh, In 10 time. years, I'll be 66 years old. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. It's Let's so think young. about it. So Let's think about it. So when I look in the mirror, I am now noticing things around my eyes. Yeah. I've seen four hairs on my earlobe. <laughs> and I got the clippers off. Oh my God. Then I thought about Simeon. Yeah. <laughs> oh Lord. Amen. 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 The brother said he got plenty. Yeah. So I know four is going to turn into plenty. Sure. I'm looking at how my body is changing. Mm -hmm. And how my mind is changing. Yeah. I am more forgetful. You know, I am struggling to remember little things, yes. which was a breeze for me before. Yes. And I'm studying and, and learning how to make your mind sharper, how to, you know, read more. Uh, and I talk more, I always talk to myself, but I'm really talking to myself now. Like I lost a pen, I bought a brand new pen yesterday and lost it this morning. I put my hand in my pocket and it fell out and it drove me crazy all morning long. Brand new pen. Little things. Little things. I see some of y'all smiling. Y'all know. <laughs> y'all know. You understand. But it will affect you emotionally. And and, and and when it affects you emotionally, it's hard, y'all. It's hard to muster L-O-V-E. It's hard for me to to be all that I should be when I'm going through some, some changes. And, and, you know, I pick on myself a lot. And I know y'all identify with that. But it's hard. Mm -hmm. it's hard. So you have to understand when people go through some changes, you have to understand, they got a season that they're going through. Yeah. You be patient, your turn is coming. Amen. Your turn is coming with something. Don't think for one minute you're going to exempt well. in life from anything going wrong. And then when your world start to not turn, you're going to want me to understand too. Amen. So, so just slow down, be compassionate, understand that God loves me, he loves you, and it's just my season. I, I'm trying Amen. to get through this. I'm trying to get through this. So just, just understand, the church lost its focus with one another. And Paul is in, Paul just says some important things here. I mean, he says some supernatural things. He says some spiritual things here. But if it's not coupled with love, it means absolutely nothing, he said. Mm -hmm. I am nothing. He said in verse 2, I am nothing. I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor. All my goods to feed the poor. What? Mm -hmm. That's nothing. Amen. Though I give my body to be burned, I sacrifice me, but not love. It profits me. Jesus gave his body, but what was the most important thing why Jesus gave his body? No. Because he so loved the what? World. The world. Amen. So that was the key to giving yeah. his body. Amen. We make sacrifices all day long. Could be under selfish ambition. We don't care. But if love is not there, look, look what the scriptures is saying. It profits me nothing. Mm. Giving something for something that 
is not given in love, you get nothing in return. There is no profit to it. There's no weight to it. There's no value to it. And this is the hardest thing for us to do. It was hard for them. Don't and, so, and, and don't say it's not hard for us today, Bridgeport. Love suffers long and is kind. It didn't say love suffers short. It says love suffers long. You are a pain in the rear, and I have to put up with that. Amen. Just like when it's my turn, you have to put it. Jason mentioned Sunday. When someone cuts you off, but we never talk about when we're in a hurry and we cut somebody off. Because we cut people off too. Wind the cell phone and oops, there's an exit. Somebody's behind us. We're at the intersection, at the stop sign. And, oh, talking to the daughter, talking to the son. Bum, 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 bum. All right. <laughs> talking on the phone. We don't think about it that way, but as soon as someone do something to us, we react. But we forget when we're holding up the line at the cash yeah. register. Can't find the credit card. Yeah. Can't find the money. Yeah. Because there's something else in the bag. Yeah. See? And people looking at their watch saying, taking deep breaths so you know they're getting impatient with you. Now, come on, let's see. You've been standing in line like me and now you're not ready when it's your turn? Suffers long and it's kind. <laughs> Love does not envy. It doesn't get jealous. It doesn't envy. Me. What you have is what you have. I can go to work and get what I want. I don't have to worry about anything that's in your life that I need or want. That's you. That's your blessing. That's your talent. God bless you. God bless you. That's just the way we should think about it. What's in your house? What's in your driveway? What's in your garage? What's in your closet? I don't have to worry about those kinds of things. That's you. That's not me. I don't want to look like you. I don't want to be you. I don't want to be me. I'm having a hard enough time to be me. Why do I want to be you? I don't understand groupies. I really don't. I don't understand people who want to look like Madonna, look like Prince, look like Justin Bieber. I don't. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Don't you know most people got some serious issues? You want to look like they're outside, but they're just like you on the inside. Amen. If you ask Michael Jackson if he can get him back here, he'll tell you that. You see what happened to him at the end? You're right. All these models, all these superstars, all these athletes, ask them about the inside. Amen. Paul Banks said that he got, um, he was talking about uh, head injuries in football. And they asked him a question, said, Carl, if, if um, you had the opportunity, knowing what you know right now, to play football again, coming out of college, would you choose it as a sport? sport? He said, no. He said, remember, I had concussions when I was playing for the Giants, when we went to the Super Bowl and won. He said, I got treatment for my concussions when it wasn't a household word. They're talking about it now. He said, back then in the 80s, I had a, he said, I, was, I had memory loss. I was nauseated and stuff like that. I went to a doctor on my own outside the NFL. Mm -hmm. And he helped me how to retain some of my speech, some of my memory. He said those things were occurring to me back then when they weren't talking about it today. Yeah. He said, I told my grandchildren to take up tennis. <laughs> he said, I want none of my none of my grandsons to go on football. I told them that and told their parents that. And this is a man that made millions of dollars in football because of the side effects of football. Mm -hmm. He said, there are times when I, when I get up, I have to remember, I have to fight to remember where I'm, where I'm at, in the room. Like, you know, the room is not, it doesn't look familiar to me, and I have to fight that. He said, and they, they, there's a process that they make you go through after you have these head injuries to help you yeah. with what goes on after the head injury. Mm. He said, no, I will play football again. See? It's not worth all that. And he, I want my grandchildren enough to tell them the truth. Don't go into those contact sports. Love does not parade itself. It's not puffed up. Man, some, some people I know got some serious issues with this. All this, this list. I was one of them. I was one of them. I, was, I had this list. I carried this list around. Does not behave rudely. Some people think think that being rude is funny. Mm -hmm. They think being rude is funny. It's not funny, it's sinful. 
So when your behavior takes you to being rude, like when you're rude to people, you're, you're snappy to people, people leave you with the impression that you are like that. You just sinned as a Christian. I'm not even yeah. talking about the world. I'm talking about Christians. We're talking about Christians here. We're not talking about the world. We're talking about church here. Yeah. So when you and I start acting like that and we start behaving like that, remember, we're sinning. Amen. These are sinful things here. Amen. So if you just think rude is funny, okay, keep it up. Amen. Keep it up. Mm -hmm. Keep it up. Does not seek his own. I don't know how many folks are self-centered. One of them. One of them. Yeah. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. Honey, stop it. I think those words are enough. I don't know how many times we've heard that in marriage. That's not right. That's not fair to say that to me. I don't know how many times we've heard that in marriage. That wasn't accurate. That wasn't the best way to put it. Don't know how many times we've heard that in relationship. Don't talk to me like that. How many times have you said that to your friends? Don't talk to me like that. I'm a human being. I'm a person with feelings. Mm -hmm. Don't talk to me like that. Mm -hmm. See? See, when you start breaking these things down, no, you don't think they're sin because it's part of your DNA and who you are, so you got to accept me the way I am. Who told you that? Yeah. <laughs> who told you that we have to accept you the way you are? You're the one that don't want to change. So you mean to tell me you want to continue in a sinful behavior, not going to heaven, so I might as well throw that out. Yes. You're not going to heaven with those kind of characteristics because guess what? Those characteristics are not of God. Mm -hmm. And if it's a behavior that you constantly have in your repertoire, guess what? You're not even trying to change. Mm -hmm. So if you're not trying to change, why would God give you grace when you have accepted these behaviors as characteristics of who you are? Mm -hmm. And when it's not who Jesus is. Mm -hmm. You know how many people are sitting up in therapy right now because of this list? Yes, mom. Every single day, every once a week, they go to a therapist and talk about these things. Mm -hmm. God got them in the Bible free. Mm -hmm. In the Bible free. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things, believes all things, hope all things, and endure all things. And one thing about love in verse 8, it never fails. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. Amen. But one thing about love, y'all, it never fails. So don't say you love someone when you know you don't even have a clue of what love is. Just don't have a clue. Well, let's... Nobody loved me. Nobody showed me how to love. Okay, that's not an excuse. The Corinthian church was divided over leadership. This is where they start having some serious problems. This is what we have to watch out for. That's why we keep preaching unity here. Some followed the teachings of Paul. Others favored the words of Cephas. And some preferred what Apollos had to say. Intellectual pride, Paul pointed out, was firmly in the center of this spirit of division. That's what he told him when he first started writing the letter to him. I see there's divisions among them. And in part, I believe it. There's also factions among them. So he's seen something else. So when we start this little pocket of stuff over here, this little pocket of stuff over here, and this little pocket of stuff up front here, that's division. Mm -hmm. The church is in parts. Amen. Yes. And then the person that's leading that, because there's always a person that's leading that, the mouth, yes. the one that's talking the most Amen. is the person that's leading that Amen. in church. Mm -hmm. That's the person that you have to watch out for, because the rest of the machine. Amen. The rest of the machine. Yes, sir. When you sit together in one room and you come to a common bond, Amen. and you're fighting for the unity of faith, you're doing the right thing. Amen. When you're going over there listening to that person, you're going over there you listening to that person. You're never going to get anywhere. Amen. If everybody don't support the program, you're never going to get the program off the ground. Because no. mm -hmm. if everybody don't buy into it, where are you going to get the help from? Amen. Well, I don't think it's a good idea. Always got that person in the crowd who's going to say, I don't think that's a good idea. Yeah. Not a motivator. Amen. Not going to do anything, but always got something to say. I don't think that's a good idea. Well, the idea is a lot about them. The idea is about the laws. Well, I don't think that's going to work. Haven't even done it yet. <laughs> haven't even done it yet, but you don't think it's going to work. Yeah. You're so afraid somebody's going to ask you, 
Kathy? Do they have a reason why it doesn't work or, or why it wouldn't work or they just want to stir up something? The devil knows it's going to work because he knows if everybody in this room get behind a program, he can't stop unity. But if he get yeah. one person, remember, 10 to 2 made Israel wander for 40 years because they said they couldn't do it. And Caleb was the one that said we can do it with Joshua. He ended up taking the land that they were so fearful of, of the giants. Isn't that amazing? Oh, there are giants over there. Oh, we can't do it. Ten leaders, remember those were ten leaders of their tribes that were so influential that when they came back with the report, they made ten tribes fall. See? See what it does? Mm -hmm. And eventually, what is right gets squashed. Sure does. And you're fighting for right, but it gets squashed. Yes. And just look at that person's life that's trying to lead the rebellion. Amen. Kathy, look at your life. See what they have done in the church. Mm -hmm. They're always bringing things down in the church. They're never going anywhere without them. Mm -hmm. And that's the devil's own. Yes. That's the devil's own. Yes. And see, we don't like to talk about those kind of people because they're always in the midst of us in church. In church, yes. They're always in the midst of us. They don't never have a clear cut plan. Amen. They don't. God needs every member in the church to make it happen. Sure does. Every person in the church to be positive. Every person in church to watch out for one another and watch out for things. So when things go wrong, when things go wrong, the other person can say, mm, you know what? I don't know if you've seen this or not. But where we're, we're doing something similar to this, we did it this way. And that person that's, that's leading a program will say, well, how did it turn out? Well, we was more successful. Mm -hmm. Now that's a positive mm -hmm. disagreement. Yes, Have you thought about it this way? Don't say it's not going to work, because anything will work with the laws. <laughs> you bring any kind of truth to a loss, it's going to work. That's foolproof. Mm -hmm. But it may not be the right, right person doing it. Mm -hmm. it. May not be the right personality. Mm -hmm. May not have the right experience. Can we look at it another way? You see? Now that's positive reinforcement. With love. But you don't tear people down, Kathy. You don't tear. The hardest thing for anyone that is given something to do is to motivate other people to do it with them. That's the hardest thing about leadership is motivation. Because you got all different kinds of mindsets and points of views that you got to rally people around. Amen. Do you think soldiers want to run to their death? No. The only way soldiers run to their death is that sergeant that's in that platoon Amen. will run first. Amen. Very Amen. seldom do the platoon get to see their lieutenant and their captain. He always come around with orders. But you know who's in the hole with them? <laughs> their sergeant. That's the one they listen to. Yes, oh yeah, they're fighting for stars and stripes. They're fighting for us back home, mm -hmm. but they're fighting with the person who's with them in the trench home. Yeah, amen. That's right. See those illustrations? Very nice. Think about it. Why in the world would you and I fight with one another for four years in June and let some stranger walk in here and dismantle us when we've been fighting with one another? Mm -hmm. Before you. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Like, somebody can come in here and dismantle us that easily? Mm -hmm. well, I don't think that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't think he make any sense. Mm -hmm. You got to just say time out. Well, you haven't been here mm -hmm. for four years. Mm -hmm. You wasn't with me in the hospital room. Amen. You wasn't with me at the funeral party. You wasn't with me in my living room talking mm -hmm. about yeah. helping me with the issues that I'm seeing. You wasn't with me. You just got here. He's got experience at that. See, when you break it down that way, then you get to see um, these are the issues that they had. They had some serious issues, and the church was just divided to no end. But thanks be to God in 2 Corinthians, Paul said that they repented of this mess and this foolishness, and they got their act together. But right here, uh, young people, single people, married people, right here. Don't, don't, don't. My dad and my mom didn't teach me that. Bless their heart. They didn't teach me this. They, they taught me their version of love. And, and Lord knows Robert and Irene Stanley loved one another, but their love wasn't 
unconditional. There, there was reasons why my dad loved my mom and my mom loved my dad. And there was yeah. reasons why my mom and my dad stopped loving one another for a period of time. But yeah. this kind of love is unconditional. This kind of love does not stop when yeah. you stop. This kind of love keeps going. Okay, and that's why we need to understand and be this kind. Because yeah. this kind of love is going to get us to the end. Amen. Robert and Irene's kind of love is going to get you divorced. Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Our kind of love will get us separated. separated. Our kind of love, like I first started off, is going to get us, I don't love you no more. Amen. Yeah. That's our kind of love. <clears throat> but not Jesus' kind of love. Yeah. So think about it. I hope that, you know, I, I, I helped you out with this. Um, I got a couple of copies up here if you want me to send it to I send it to you. But um, this is it. And we, we all struggle with it. I raised my hand. You didn't raise yours. You notice that? I raised my hand. But we struggle with this. No lie. I mean, just like the church in the courtroom. It's a struggle. It really is. I mean, because when someone hits you, you want to hit them back. When someone swears that you, you want to swear back. When someone do something to you, you want to pay them back. I know. I know. And it's tough. I'm talking about the church. I'm not talking about the church. Don't think what I'm saying these things. I'm talking about the world. We make a clear distinction as Christians with what the world does and what we do. We know there's a clear distinction with that. But what we don't understand inside the church, we have those issues. Amen. Yes, you do. That's right. We know. Yes, so. And it's that behavior that is sinful. And once we once we are not united in our thought, word, and deed, we're sinful. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that. It's right there in front of you. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Ellis, can you close us in prayer?